Hi everyone, Dennis Montecruz is here, and we're going to take a look today, hopefully to your enjoyment, at <laughs> one of my old games played back in 1986. Um, I was a master back then, I was 2300 plus, and my opponent was, um, I think, around 2150 or so, or at least um, was there at some point in the uh, not too distant past and got there again. Anyway, uh, I had black in this game, and um, I think you'll find it quite interesting. So there are a few moments in particular where I'm really going to encourage you to uh, take a deep, deep look and see what you can come up with. All right, so I played uh, kind of Benoni. We get into a modern Benoni. I guess um, I think I was trying to avoid the uh, the time and off variation with f4 and bishop to b5 check and all that, although since he had already played knight to f3 on move 2, I'm not sure what exactly I was trying to avoid with this move order, but anyway, that's why I played. Maybe I was afraid of some bishop to f4 line and wanted him to commit some other things first. Uh, anyway, nowadays in this position, white players would play h3 and go for this bishop to d3 line, and then after takes and takes, um, the main variation in terms of popularity certainly is to play b5 with very, very deeply analyzed variations that I'm not going to uh, bore or instruct you with. So you'll have to do that on your own or wait for another another show. All right, so bishop to e2, e6, castles, takes and takes. Okay, and here black has uh, a basic choice, whether to play a6 or not. And uh, often, actually, in the line where he doesn't play a6 right away, he ends up playing it soon enough. So, for instance, rook e8, knight to d2, knight b to d7. White plays a4, uh, often with the idea of lifting the rook over to, to um, a3. So there's some variations, for instance, where white plays queen c2, the knight goes to d1, and then the rook can swing over. And this is aimed against some plans by black with knight to h5. So you can um, take, well, for instance, here, okay, knight e5. And I believe there's some old Fisher game, Fisher against, or Spassky Fisher from the World Championship match. And then I believe um, Petrosian against Gligorich. Uh, refuted the plan some time later, so it was like queen c2, knight h5, takes, takes, and then knight to d1, uh, followed by rook a3, h3. Actually, this isn't exactly it, but this is this is like it. Uh, that was the the general the general idea. All right. Um, so anyway, knight e5 is possible, but very often black just plays a6 and just cuts it all out. So anyway, back in the days of yore, I played a6. My opponent played a4, and then here, uh, well, nowadays, if I were playing the modern Benoni, which I don't, but if I were, I would play bishop to g4. And um, here I, okay, I, I kind of think that white should probably play knight to d2, or at least that's my my feeling about this at the moment, to uh, to preserve the knight rather than the bishop. Well, on bishop f4, then takes, takes, queen e7, and uh, I, I kind of like this position for black. I mean, I, I have respect for the bishop here, but... Uh, this, this light squared bishop that black has is a little bit uh, superfluous with respect to the rest of the position. So it's not a superfluous piece in the Dvoretsky sense, where you've got multiple pieces competing for the same squares, usually knights. But it's superfluous in the sense that almost all of black's forces are operating on dark squares, uh, or at least to control dark squares, where obviously the, the bishop, the light squared bishop, can't do that. So by swapping itself off for the white knight, which can fight for squares like e5 and d4, or even d6 by swinging to d4 and then c4, d2 and then c4, um, it, it kind of helps. Anyway, this position is, I would say, roughly equal. Okay, so after a4, I played rook to e8 back then, queen c2, bishop g4, bishop to f4, and here I played queen c7. But queen e7 is actually very, very interesting, simply piling up on this, this e4 pawn. And, um, well, one idea for white might be to play h3 with the idea, okay, again, of just grabbing the bishop here, takes, takes, knight b to d7, and, all right, it's um, a normal-ish position. I mean, maybe white is a, a tiny bit better, you know, somewhere between equal and slightly better. Black's queen would be a little bit better placed on c7, frankly, to, um, to help with the queenside counterplay. But, all right, this is certainly playable for black. But does black have anything else after in this variation. So is h3 um, a, a legitimate move? So this is a, a place where I'd, I'd really suggest that you stop and think. And I spent 
actually quite a bit of time analyzing this myself and um, and then checked later with the computer and my analysis was actually very good so I mean there were a couple of um, little ideas the computer had to supplement it pretty far in but but basically I got it right but it took took a little time to uh, to work things out so see what you can find here All right, well, I hope you stopped and thought. If, if not, uh, I'm still not going to give you the whole thing, so I'll give you a little little uh, taste of where you should be looking, and then if you haven't already started looking, go deeper. So the key idea, the key, or let's say the, um, the principal try, the uh, critical variation after h3, is knight takes e4. So this is the move you should have looked at. And if you haven't, then let me strongly suggest that you do so now. See what you can find with this. Okay, well, White could play some kind of bailout, but he wouldn't be in a very good shape. For instance, he could bail out with Bishop takes d6, Queen takes d6, Knight e4, Knight takes e5, and now Knight to d7 is a good move, and Black is a bit better. Uh, very well placed, material is equal, but but um, Black has the Bishop here and is just so much more active. Of course, White could play h takes g4, but Okay, we take the knight on c5, and again, black is doing very, very well. Uh, note, by the way, that white cannot play knight takes b7 because of bishop to f5. So the queen's under attack, the, the bishop on e2 is under attack, the knight on b7 is under attack, and after something like queen to c7, um, okay, you could probably still just play rook takes e2 here, maybe rook a to d1 gives a little counterplay, but just simply rook e to c8 is winning a piece up for nothing. Okay, for one pawn, but that's probably going to drop shortly as well. So the point of this is that bishop takes d6 really is, is not, not a good idea. So white has to go in for this. h takes g4. Okay, knight takes c3, b takes c3, queen e2, and now of course the key idea for white in all of this, otherwise it's just a free pawn for black, is rook a to e1. Note by the way, this would be a variation where Black would be much happier if uh, a4 and a6 weren't in, but it is. So queen c2, rook e8 check, bishop f8. And now bishop takes d6 is probably good for a small edge, knight to d7. Probably there's nothing better, strangely enough. Rook takes, king g7, takes, takes, rook to b8. And uh, it's, it's a kind of messy position, but the rooks in the past d pawn, I think, together spell some advantage for white but nothing fatal. But the key move after bishop f8 is bishop h6, of course, keeping the black king buried on, on g8 in this mating net. So the following moves are forced. Knight to d7, rook takes a8, and then f6. So you got to get the king out of there. If queen takes a4, white just wins immediately with rook to e1, followed by rook e8, or rook takes f8 check, and then rook to e8. So for instance, black is one move too slow. Okay, so queen takes a4 was not forced, though. f6 is forced. Um, here, if rook to e1, then black has time for king f7. That's the idea. So rook to d8 is a nice prophylactic move. Managed to find this as well. And here, okay, if king to f7 takes king e8, the problem with this is rook takes h7. So white is um, up a piece at this point, and black has no chance. So queen takes a4 is the best try, protecting the knight. And now, well, if um, if rook e1, then king f7, and, and black is again in time. So the key move here is very nice, very subtle, rook to b1. All right, so the point of this is that if b5, to save the pawn and keep white from playing rook takes b7, now rook e1, and now the knight on d7, is hanging. So if king f7, rook takes d7, check, and the queen on a4 is no longer protecting it. So this just wins. So queen a5 is a better try, but now rook takes d7, bishop h6, rook b takes b7, and black is hopeless. White's just going to check on, on the back rank. Black will have to interpose with the bishop, and then white doubles rooks on the 8th rank, takes, and wins the ending. For instance, bishop f8 here, takes, okay, and black at least grabs one pawn, and now uh, a nice little finesse for, for white, g5, so that's the point, get the pawn back, 
and then we get this pawn back, and the white king is in the square of the uh, the pawn. Anyway, the knight could get back too, knight g5, e4, c3. But okay, either way, it's uh, it's winning for white. So the upshot of all of this then is that after queen to e7, white can simply play h3. Very good move. Uh, and of course, black would play bishop f3 and so on. Uh, white could also play more tamely with rook f to e1, but this isn't so important. Knight b to d7, and then uh, there's a choice between h3 and knight to d2, as before. All right, I won't go into all the sub variations there. All right, so queen c7 is what I played. Rook f to e1, knight b to d7, knight to d2, bishop takes e2, rook takes e2. And now, um, White's position is a little bit funny with the rook on e2 at the moment. So that gives rise to maybe some interesting tactical possibilities. So see what you can come up with here. Black to move. What should I do? Well, I think there are at least three moves that are of some interest. There are uh, similar plans involved involving improving the position of my knights. So I played knight to g4 in the game with the idea of putting one knight back on e5 then maybe playing c4 and, and knight to d3. So that was uh, one of the plans. I could have also pursued this with c4 first, but okay, white could play with like a5, but more to the point, maybe something like h3, preventing at least the one plan. So I could still play knight to, to e5 maybe, but well, if I go to c5, maybe knight takes c4. If I go to e5, maybe he trades. So uh, that's why I played the knight to, to uh, g4 move order. But another interesting move, which I thought of when I looked at the game recently, was b5. And if you didn't consider this move, let me invite you to do so now. See what you what you think about this at this point. Okay, well here, um, the key line, of course, is for white to grab the pawn. Otherwise, black is expanded for free and will stand well. So takes, takes, have to trade the rooks, and then knight takes b5. Okay, throw in rook a1 check, knight f1. And now this might seem like a, just a bad position because the d6 pawn is hanging. But in fact, black can play the move queen to b8. So this is a, a crucial resource without which all of this would just be, would just be garbage. Um, so now, okay, bishop takes d6, hangs the knight on b5. So knight takes d6. And now, all right. There's a bit of awkwardness for white on this diagonal. I mean, the bishop on f4 is unprotected. So is there any way for, for black to take advantage of this? Okay, well, the obvious move is knight to h5. And it's the correct move. Okay, and then white has to play queen to d2. And now, what should black play at this point? If you suggested knight f4 followed by bishop to e5, well, you had a little hallucination because queen takes f7, check is there, and then queen takes d7. And after bishop takes d6, black is down three pawns. Oh, he's threatening mate in two, to be sure, with bishop takes h2 check, followed by rook takes f1 mate, but it's very easy to prevent this. White could simply play g3. That would be more than good enough. Or we can even be fancy and play e5, takes, and then d6, getting this pawn rumbling. And this just wins on the spot, because if the bishop moves, the bishop's under attack now by the rook on e2, then rook to e8 check wins the queen. And um, the only move, other move there really is to consider is queen takes d6. But now queen e8 check and queen takes e5. So knight takes f4 followed by bishop to e5 is uh, a bad plan for black. If the f7 pawn were covered, it would be great, but it's not. Now, a very good move and a very simple move is just to play g5. So this, this wins the piece. Bishop takes g5, queen takes d6. And although white has three pawns for the, uh, for the piece, it's, uh, it's really not enough. Black is, is definitely better here, much better. And even better than that, I think, is knight to e5. So a little bit of a quiet move here. So um, just to take the most obvious move, well, okay, first of all, notice that if, if bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, knight c4, well, here that mating idea comes into play once again, like this. So that's, of course, crucial. So white doesn't have that resource after knight e5. If he plays knight c4 here, well now, um, knight to f3 check is, is interesting, but it's not best. Probably the best line here now is queen takes f4, takes takes here, 
and then check. And okay, if king to g2, you can play knight f4 check. If king to h1, though, it's kind of interesting. Black should, pr excuse me, probably play bishop to d4. Just um, building up. Of course, if rook f1, then king g2. So this, and now d6 and king f8. And I think this position is equal, but not better for black. So after knight to c4, while knight take to f3 check is interesting, it's not the best move. The best move is knight takes f4. Queen takes f4. And now the funny idea we saw a couple of moves ago, g5. So once again, this trick. And um, all right, if queen takes g5, of course, then knight c4. OK, but what about queen to g3? So what happens if white simply maintains this pin? Then what does black do? Well, the answer here, I believe, though actually I'm, I'm having to uh, solve this on the spur of the moment, is, I think, queen to b5. Let's see if this is right. So if knight takes e, e5, of course, that's easy. Queen takes e2. So b3 is the only possible move here, clearly enough. All right, and now, OK, I don't see anything better than knight takes c4 off the top of my head. So b takes c4, and now queen to b1. Yep, that's winning. All right, but now I should ask why this doesn't work right away. Why can't we just play queen to b5 here? Hmm. So knight e5, oh, OK, that's the point. Knight e5, queen takes e2, queen takes f7, check wins. Like that. All right, so we figured that out. Phew. <laughs> All right. So g5, very nice. So it's a, it's a, it's a move to, to um, push him away from the attack on f7. Very nice move. OK, so now we see another winning idea for black, which means that this whole line is OK for black. Or does it? Well, this is the key position. All that showed was that knight takes d6 is no good. So we have to evaluate just some normal moves like knight to c3 or the queen coming to c4 to protect the knight. And I think in both of these cases, white's a little bit better. Nothing huge. I mean, it's, it's basically like a Benko gambit. In a position like this, black would probably play knight to e8, just overprotecting the deep, well, not overprotecting, protecting the deep pawn, um, uncovering this diagonal to b2, and maybe preparing knight to e5 in some cases, maybe even bishop to e5, although that could be a little bit strange. But there could be some cases where that would be useful. Um, so I think black has some compensation for the pawn here, definitely. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% compensation, but it's certainly close enough that it's playable. So I think b5 would have been interesting, although I think what I played is at least as good, but it's just a, a very different approach. All right, so knight to g4, bishop to g3. And this was an interesting move, um, preparing in some cases to play h3 and f4, or f4 first. All right, so here black has some interesting possibilities. I played c4, which I think is perfectly good. But I could also have played knight g to e5, and on f4, then made a return trip to, to g4. And here, for instance, here's a, a very nice line, not forced. Uh, white could play rook a to e1 here. I'd say, I would say this position is about equal, but, but very unclear. So knight f3. Uh, here maybe c4, whoops. So yeah, maybe um, c4 is best and on h3, then the knight comes back and maybe bounces to h5 next. But bishop to d4 is kind of interesting. Um, king h1 is about equal, but knight takes d4 looks like an interesting move. I mean, you get rid of this strong bishop, um, seem to be weakening black's pawn structure, but we'll see that white has some really strange problems with coordination here. So c takes d4, let's say knight to d1, takes, takes, rook e4, and, um, okay, so we grabbed a pawn. But it might at first seem as if rook to c7 should give white uh, enough compensation. Certainly white's already in some trouble here, but, but rook c7 is uh, kind, of, kind of fun. So the refutation of this, see if you can find it, is rook a to e8. Very simple threat of rook to e1 check followed by bishop e1, rook e1 mate. And it's actually rather difficult for white to cope with this threat. Um, knight f2 certainly doesn't help because while it puts the rook on a1 into the game, it shuts the bishop g3 out. So still rook to e1 is mate in two. 
<clears throat> so all you can try here, well, you could play maybe rook to c8, which is losing a rook. Uh, seemingly plausible move here is king f1. And now we just play knight to c5. And the threat is to play knight to d3. And again, mate on e1. And this is going to be the uh, reaction even to h3. So knight to d3 takes here and mate. So um, black is doing quite well after knight g to e5 as well. This This would have been a very playable approach for me, again, with the idea of playing c4 and knight to d3. But I played c4 first. Here he played a5. And um, here, though, I did not play knight g to e5 because of rook to a4. And I was worried about the uh, the pressure against this pawn. So just to give a, a sample line, rook a to c8, knight to d1, b5, takes, knight takes, and now bishop takes e5 is actually quite good. Bishop e5, oh sorry, rook e5, and now um, the point of this is that if rook a6, I have knight takes d5, taking advantage of the pin, and also threatening knight to b4. So rook a5 is best, protecting the d5 pawn a second time, and after rook to e7, it's roughly equal, but maybe white's a tiny bit better. Um, I have these two, two weaknesses over on the uh, queen side, maybe even the d6 pawn in some positions down the road could become a weakness. I, I definitely have counterplay, but I think white is slightly for choice here. So after a5 in the game, I played b5. He took, and I took. But here, too, I would say he's slightly better. So I think the last line is probably a little bit uh, better for me. But I, I, I think I played well here. So knight to a4. And now, what, what should black to move to in this position? Uh, I'd love to play knight takes d5. But the problem is that after queen takes c4, I'm actually in some trouble. And the point is that after queen c4, knight c4, my d6 pawn is extremely weak. In fact, it's it's just a goner. So I'm I'm uh, I'm worse. I'm going to be a pawn down for a little a little bit of compensation, but not enough. But I was ready for this, and I played a good move. I played c3. So the the point of this funny move is that now. Uh, after b takes c3, or knight takes c3, which is what happened, uh, b c3, I have knight takes d5. And now there's no queen c4, his knight doesn't get to c4 anymore. So this is actually quite a lot better. So that position's fine for black. So he played knight c3, which is the better choice. Now knight takes d5, exploiting two pins. So the, uh, the pin against the queen on c2 and the rook on e2. But he found a very cute rejoinder. He played e takes d5, which might not be the, the very best move, but... It's pretty close to even in any case, but here I had a nice, um, maybe a nice uh, chance, small chance. Rook e2 is what happened, queen d1, and now here, another tactical moment, figure out what black to move should do. So it's a fun game. There's a lot of these uh, really rich positions where all of a sudden there are a lot of little tactics to uh, to look at. Okay, so the, the basic point, of course, is if I move my rook, he takes the knight on g4. Obviously, I can take the knight on d2, which is what, in fact, I played. But what else can I try? One move that's interesting is bishop takes c3. Okay, on this, queen takes e2, and now bishop t takes b2. And, um, all right, from here, white has a couple of reasonable possibilities. So there's rook to b1, which is the most obvious move, and we should start with that. I have two pieces under attack, so I'd better do something. Queen c2 is forced. Now queen g4, queen d2. And here if he plays bishop takes d6, well, in this case, I just take the pawn back. If he takes, I take. And I'm up a pawn for nothing. And um, this probably should be a winning endgame. Um, you can actually find a, a great example of this kind of ending. I think the uh, last game of the uh, Alyekin Capablanca match in 1927 is a classic demonstration of how to win this uh, this very sort of ending. And I think actually they had this, this kind of ending at least twice in that match, with Ilyekin winning both times. So you can definitely check that out, and I think you'll uh, definitely benefit from it. But instead of bishop takes d6, white can play better. You could play rook to d1, and here he's only a little bit worse. So this position is not quite as, as bad. He's a little bit in a little bit better shape. But still, he should avoid that. And instead of rook to b1, play the slightly paradoxical rook to d1 not threatening anything at all. The point is that, uh, okay, well, my knight's still threatened, but I mean, not threatening anything new with rook to d1. But after knight to e5, which is, I think, best, 
I mean, if my knight goes to f6, he plays knight c4, hitting the bishop and hitting the, um, the pawn on d6, if nothing else. Maybe knight to e4 can be interesting, too. Anyway, uh, well, no, knight c4. Anyway, knight to e5, now knight e4, hitting the bishop. Um, and here, if I play bishop to a3, then I'm in trouble in this position. So um, my queen's obviously under attack, but there's also the follow-up of queen f3, which would hit the bishop, and indirectly eyes the rook, you know, his knight to f6 check ideas. And indeed, knight f6 could be a problem here too. Knight f6 followed by queen takes e5. So there are an awful lot of problems here for black in this position. This should definitely be avoided. So after knight to e4, the best move is rook to b8. But now he can just take on a6, and uh, a possible variation here that leads to a draw is queen to c2, rook e1, protecting the knight, saving the rook, bishop to c3, and now queen takes d6. Here, white has, um, well, certainly quite a bit, but black can save himself. Um, one very funny way he can do it is with queen to b1. This seems to be good enough for a draw as well. But um, let's just look at the simple rook to b1. So then check, and we have this perpetual. So probably after queen to b1, uh, maybe queen to d8 check is the... Um, the solution there as well. So either perpetual or rook takes queen, rook takes b1. Okay, so this is kind of a, an amusing variation. So bishop takes c3, well white has to find some some neat moves. Well, black has to find some moves too at the end. Uh, it looks like objectively this is just equality. But maybe with rook takes f2 I could have had an advantage. So I hope you saw this move. I, I don't think I did during the game. So bishop takes f2, knight f2, King f2, queen b6 check, and queen takes b2. And here, all right, uh, white only, white's up a piece for two pawns, but you can see that all of the white pieces are, are really under heavy pressure, especially on this, this diagonal. I mean, you can see that this is causing white all kinds of grief here. So he better find something really good, or he's just going to be down, you know, a, a decisive quantity of material. So knight e to e4 seems to be best, and now f5. Okay, and now what? Well, Rook to b1, queen a3 is forced, and now rook to b3. Whoops. And all of a sudden, it, it might seem as if it's um, it's uh, black who's in trouble, but, but not quite. Queen a5, we're still hitting the knight on c3 twice. Knight to d6. And now, okay, if bishop takes c3, maybe knight to c4 could be a little bit um, problematic. But queen c7 is best. All right, now, knight to b7. Bishop c3, d6, queen c4, king g1. And after this exchange and king f1, uh, white is slightly worse. But this is probably going to be a draw. I mean, the, the, the pawn on d6 is obviously very good. Of course, black's a pawn might become quite good as well. Uh, black should first worry about consolidating here, make moves like bishop to f6, maybe king f7, and so on, <clears throat> making sure that the, the, uh, the d pawn is neutralized. But... The thing is, okay, white could play maybe just play d7, rook a3, d8, queen, and after bishop takes d8, knight takes d8, rook takes d8, rook takes a6, it's a, a fairly easy draw. I mean, it's it's possible for black to win if white plays poorly, but it's it's a theoretical draw, and that's what's most likely to occur from here. So I would have had some chances here. I mean, white would have had to find a, a number of difficult moves, but ultimately this should be a draw as well. So anyway, after queen to d1, I played rook takes d2, queen takes d2, knight e5. Uh, my opponent played queen to e2, which is a good move, getting out of the way of knight c4. And um, this is an interesting position as well. But um, well, what should what should white or sorry, what should black do here? I think black can still have some small hopes for an initiative here. Um, I mean, I like I like black's pieces better than white's. I mean, I think the knight, the minor pieces are better for black slightly. Um, I, I kind of like black's queen relative to white. The only problem I have in my position is the a6 pawn. And that's probably enough of a problem, though, that the game should be a draw, as indeed happens. Um, but um, I still feel like I maybe should have a little something here. So see what you can find. See if you can figure out anything good for black here. Well, objectively, I don't think that I have anything, but I, I think I can maybe get a little more play than I do in the game with the move 
knight to c4. And, okay, if white plays knight to a4 or knight to d1, I think the position is equal. Um, if he plays knight to b5, this is just nothing. I play queen c5, and the knight's got to retreat. But the interesting question is, well, what about rook to a4? This leads to some, some fun play. So knight takes b2, queen b2, bishop c3, bishop takes d6. So um, th this is kind of uh, an entertaining position at this point. Um, okay, of course I could play queen takes d6, then queen c3, queen takes d5. All right, this should be this should be perfectly good as well. So this is probably quite simple. Um, let me think here. If there's anything big I'm missing. Yeah, I mean th this should be pretty good for me. But I could also play queen d7. This this leads to some some amusement. So hitting the rook, of course the queen's still under attack, and now queen a3. And then here a very interesting line is rook to e8. So this gives, I think, black a big advantage. The threat is not just um, mate, but rook e1 followed by rook to a1, winning the exchange. But white has a remarkable defense against this plan with f3, believe it or not. So now if rook to e1 check, king f2, rook a1, white just takes this bishop, and after rook a4, plays queen f6. And incredibly, um, black has nothing here. So the threat of bishop to e5 is extremely strong. And probably the, the best thing that I can do here is play rook a2 check and then rook e2. So I can cough the exchange back up and this, this is a draw. So after f3, black should instead play queen to b5, keeping the, uh, the threats up against the, the white king. After h4, queen takes d5, king h2, bishop b2, and then queen c6. Okay, kind of an abstract variation, but ultimately black maintains his extra pawn with very good winning chances. So this is essentially just a lot of trouble for white for no real, without any real justification. But again, if um, knight c4, just knight a4 or knight to d1 should equalize. All right, well, I played queen to c4, and my opponent found a good move here, king to f1. Um, probably the best that I could play here. I mean, I'd love to play knight to d3, but this is a blunder. He plays rook a4. What do I do? Queen to b3 is the only try. Queen takes, bishop takes. But now I'm in a, in a fatal pin. Rook to c4. I lose the bishop in the game. So I didn't do that, of course. What I should have played was queen to b4 with the idea of knight c4, or rook to b8 even. Uh, here, the following should would be at least uh, a logical continuation. Takes, takes, queen b2, check here, and now bishop takes e5. And um, I don't really want to give him this, this nice pass d pawn, so probably best is just to give perpetual check here. Um, yeah, so that's a possible continuation with a draw. Instead, well, I decided to play king f8, and while it's playable, it maybe gives him a little edge here. So he played rook a4, I took, and now probably the best move would have been f5 to keep his knight off of e4. Um, then one possible continuation is to take and play knight to d1. Th this has to be a draw, though. So maybe white has a, a minuscule edge because my a6 pawn is slightly weaker than his b2 pawn, but really it, it would be pretty surprising if I uh, failed to draw this. All right, but in the game I played rook to b8, trying to stay active. And here I think he should play knight to d1, but, but he had an interesting idea. He realized that my d6 pawn is a bit vulnerable. So rook takes b2 check, king to d1. And here I think I, I made another inaccuracy. Well, I think the position is, is equal here. Uh, and king to e7 is maybe pushing my luck a little bit. Um, he could have maybe had some, some ways of giving me a, a tough time after that. So the simplest would be either rook to b4, keeping his knight off of e4, or knight to c4. I think I probably rejected this because of something like rook c6, but, um, but this is no big deal. Takes, takes. And um, actually, this is even a little bit better for me. I mean, white has to be accurate in, in holding the draw. So for instance, um, d6. Okay, I don't want to allow rook to c8 check in d7, obviously. So something like rook to b6, check here. Rook to d8, 
Okay, let's say h5, just to keep that protected. But uh, I don't seem to be able to win this. I, if I can win his d-pawn, then I would have chances. Of course, it's still a theoretical draw, but uh, I don't think I can even do that. So some chances. Uh, maybe h4, by the way, is slightly more accurate here. But um, I don't think I can even win it. So for instance, king e2, king f6, say h4, rook to b5, rook to d7. And I, I can't get any closer. So I can get to here, but if I play king e6, he just plays rook e7 check. And I can't make any progress. So this is just a draw. Okay, so um, in the game I played king to e7, and he plays knight to e4. And all right, it's getting almost scary. I have to be careful. So rook to b5 is what I was counting on, and but this is just a draw. He just gave perpetual here, like this. But he has a couple of chances to maybe push for a bit more along the way. So after rook a7 check, king f8, here actually bishop to e5 is a, a little bit awkward for me. So okay, I take the pawn, and now he's threatening rook to, to a8 mate. What do I do about this? Um, maybe the best is king to e8, but okay, I mean, I, you know, it's it's a little bit a little bit uh, scary here. Now bishop to e7. Okay, so the point of rook to c7, you know, the the check and then point of rook on c7 is that I don't have knight to c4 now. So I have to try this, and now he's threatening rook to c8 mate. So I play here. Now he's threatening rook to a8, which wins a piece. So I come over here, and you know, I'm getting a little far away from my pieces uh, from from the king side. It's a little bit a little bit. Um, vulnerable there, but it seems like I'm holding. So I'm threatening f5 here, so he's got to move the bishop away. And um, and now after bishop to e5, it looks like I have everything under control. So it's it, black is safe, but you know, some scary scary moments there. Also, okay, after rook a8 check in the game, king e7, uh, he has the cute move rook to e8 check. Takes knight d6. And um, here... All right, I'm I'm just uh, a pawn down. Although I can probably win it back. So here, here, d6, something like f5, and um, yeah, this is kind of a weird variation. I just it's as if I'm ignoring his d pawn, but um, you know the points to keep his king restrained, and again, gradually I can encircle the uh, the d pawn and win it. The the main thing is to not let his king activate while I I put my pieces on the best squares. But again, you know, here I'm at least having to, to solve some problems. It's it's not trivial. But anyway, you know, I was pushing a little bit. He was pushing a little bit. And I think overall the uh, the result was, was quite a fair one. I think we both found some nice ideas. And so the draw was agreed here. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, I certainly enjoyed it uh, looking at it. I think I was kind of disappointed at the time. Um, you know, I was very effective. Uh, still pretty effective, but back then, I mean... I think non-masters almost never drew. I mean, I had a, a huge score against against experts. I mean, beyond what the rating would exp the rating difference would would lead you to expect. So I was a little disappointed, but he played a, played a good game. And um, you know, now looking back at it, I, I I enjoy it. It's just a very a very interesting, and I think overall pretty pretty well played game by both sides. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Said that already. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.